Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Week in the Verse, where we take a look at all of the stuff that's gone on basically over the past week in Star Citizen and break it all down for you. So don't forget that for the entirety of the month of May, we are working together with a bunch of YouTubers, Star Citizen YouTubers, um, called the Hope Squadron, and we are working towards raising money for St. Jude's Play Live. So if you can, it'd be really, really awesome if you can donate some money. Uh, we have some milestones set up, so check those out. Things like shaving heads and face reveals and all sorts of cool stuff. So uh, yeah, definitely, uh, if you can donate some money, we will really appreciate it. All right, let's get started. So first up, um, we've got a few things off a of spectrum, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, um, one of the CIG devs, Xylo, has a, a post on Spectrum. I think he was actually replying to a, uh, a thread that we featured on Spectrum Drama last week. Okay. Um, talking about where the hell is 3.5.1. Yeah. Um, his response is that they are working towards a 3.5.1 patch, but he's got no actual time of when we're going to get it yet. Right. Uh, so, yeah. There was the the theory that they were just going to hang out until three point six, but no, they are looking at a patch. That's just good to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's good to hear because um, yeah, that was our theory. Our working theory was that they were just going to kind of just let it slide, basically. But no, yeah, that's that's good news. Okay, so recently they took out the zero dollar CCU upgrades. Uh, for those that don't know what those were, they, there was a time where you could purchase an, a ship upgrade. Uh, it was like it was not really an upgrade it was more like a swap so if if you had an avenger and there was a ship that was of a similar price that you wanted you could get an upgrade from the avenger to whatever it was um, they've stopped doing those now uh, now ship upgrades are only done with um, anything over like five pound or five dollars whatever they wherever it is yeah um so since they took out those zero dollar ccus there's been a few issues because um, so basically, uh, some of the ship prices have gone up or gone down, mostly gone up um, since they were kind of introduced. Um, so when they rolled out this removal of the CCUs, um, the program kind of got confused um, and removed some CCUs that people had actually paid money for. Oh, no. um, yeah, so there's that issue going on. They're still looking into it. Uh, also, we've got an update on the Xi'an language. They've added some uh, geography-based words and sentences to, to the database. So if the Xi'an language is a, a, a big thing for you, then there's an update for you. I just want to know the word for penis. Yeah, I don't think they've worked that one out yet. <laughs> Do, does Xi'an have peni? Peni? Yeah, maybe. Maybe they've got two. Maybe, or maybe they have. Yeah. <laughs> So at the beginning of the week, there was a, uh, another law post. This one's about Ascension Astro, which is like a high-end stealth component manufacturer. Um, the story is mainly about the CEO. Uh, she started out in Origin. I forget her name now. Um, she started out in Origin, got fired from there, started the new company, Ascension Astro. Built up this sort of, kind of like the Apple of uh, ship components. Right. Like business, um, but got a bit too far into it with uh, drinking drugs and stuff and then kind of crashed out but um, yeah it was an, an okay law post no real information um, okay then we had the inside Star Citizen episode um, so they t they took a look at the thruster damage states and uh, how they're coming along with them um, they're making it so that each thruster can individually be sort of damaged or destroyed um, which will affect your handling in combat um, visually, it just sort of produces sparks, um, yeah. but it's going to be more in the feel of the ship, how it flies. Yeah, it's a good idea. Then they had to look at the harvestable entities, so they were introducing sort of fruit um, and various other objects in the, the world at large that you can just walk around and pick up. Um, the problem is that at the moment, yes, you can pick up this random fruit on a planet, um, but you still don't really have anywhere to put it, so you're just left carrying it around like a, uh, a simple person. Yeah. 
<laughs> like me and my teddy bear. Yeah. Uh, they look, a quick look at the new subscriber flare helmets. Now, these look actually really cool. Uh, for those that haven't seen them, one of them is basically, uh, it looks like a skull hologram on the inside of the helmet. Um, and there's another one which looks a bit like a sort of a, a, a legionnaire or Praetorian or whatever you want to call them. Um, very sort of Romanesque ish in a sci fi scene. Yeah, you'll no doubt probably see us in these at some point soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're actually making some changes with the subscriber program. So it looks good. Yeah, it needed to be done. And. Um, yeah, it's nice to see them actually kind of putting some effort back in again because, um, yeah, we need some shinies. So next up, we had a look at the Banu Defender. Uh, they were showing off some of the materials they're looking at using with the, the craft. And the shape of Banu Defender at the moment uh, is looking actually really good, in my opinion. Uh, I've, I've always been quite interested in the ship and uh, seeing it you know, in its sort of concept state. It's uh, giving me some hope for the different look of ships yeah it's definitely quite unique um it's got that kind of um almost like a tie fighters type feel i think it's tie fighters can't remember mm. um you know that but it's um yeah it, it looks like a bug <laughs> yeah yeah it looks you know like a bug. me and you know me and bug shaped <laughs> yeah. Ships, like, yeah. Moth. definitely um it would definitely sit perfectly in your um in your in your hangar so yeah uh, but um, yeah, there was a few kind of questions and, and like people were commenting on like the, the split cockpit and all that kind of stuff. But I think um, I think they've done a really good job at making it feel a little more alien and a little bit more unusual. So, um, mm, yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, we also had a, uh, a very quick look at the um, Microtech Transit Hub. Um, essentially, the, the layout is exactly the same as every other Transit Hub we've got in the game at the moment. Um, but the sort of look and feel is a bit more sort of clean. It's, it's like if Origin made a transit hub. <laughs> yeah. And then they had a look at the 890 jump, uh, which even has a swimming pool underneath. Um, I'm just kind of wondering how many people are just going to jump in there to see if it works yeah. properly and uh, just drown instantly. Be a lot of deaths, a lot of um, 890 jump related <laughs> deaths. <laughs> oh, yeah. So next up, we had the um, Star Citizen live video, uh, well, stream, should I say. This was the, the first subscriber live audience that, that they've ever done. Um, and they were taking questions directly from the audience, um, all subscribers. Uh, one of the questions that come up was, um, they were talking about the Caterpillar ramps. Um, someone asked, when is that going to be a thing? <laughs> um, and basically, it's in the backlog. Yeah. With everything else. With everything else, yeah. Also in the backlog is Planetside Roads. It's been a bit of a sort of uh, hot topic at the moment because of the Ranger. Yeah. Um, if people have got bikes, they want to drive them around on roads. But still no roads on the roadmap yeah. and no real look at when they're going to put it in. It sounded like they kind of looked at the, the tech and someone made uh, a tool to put roads into cities. Um, but then it didn't get used for a while, uh, and now it's it's currently broken. Yeah, I think it's kind of outdated now, sort of thing. So uh, that's a pain as well, because like you said, I mean, you know, it's all right if you've got one of the big buggies and you want to drive around. But yeah, the minute you've got that bike, you want like a nice smooth, like Highway 66 or Route 66, whatever it is. Um, yeah, something pleasant to ride on. Yeah. So then they went on to um, scanning. Um, the actual question was relating to sort of how does how will scanning help exploration gameplay? Um, they didn't really have an answer for that, but they sort of breezed over some of the scanning things um, about uh, you know trying to figure out what information they want people to get from scanning and also how it's going to work once the the OCS is all implemented. Um, they've got a few hurdles to get over, but um, it sounds quite good from what they're going with. Uh, they also talked about the UEE uniforms. Uh, some people have been asking for sort of military uniforms in the verse so they can, uh, I don't know, role play their position on a big ship, I guess. Yeah. Don't know. Um, they didn't really confirm or deny whether they're actually going to go in. Um, 
But if they are going to go into the PU, it will be probably after Squadron 42 is released. Yeah, and we're going to have to be able to trust that ships have air. Yeah, that is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good point. And then they went on to uh, the persistence, uh, in-game persistence at the moment. Um, and, I mean, this is mostly, mostly what they said was information we've had before many times. Um, but they did actually confirm in this video what we had previously heard at BritainCon was that the servers are overfilling with content on them. Um, putting more content in will damage the uh, gameplay experience at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, once again, object, object container streaming on the server is a big priority for them. And then server meshing as well. Yeah. Once we've got that, I think there's going to be like a snowball effect where they're just going to be able to start rolling things out really a lot a lot easier um, than they are at the minute because they have to balance everything so it doesn't break. Yeah. So then they went on to player inventories. Um, there was a question about how is player inventories and physicalized in inventories going to work properly. Um, so let's kind of discuss this a little bit. But um, the, the main takeaway was that Backpacks are confirmed to be coming at some point. Cool. <laughs> we're going to need them if we're going to be carrying around the uh, flight suits and armor and weapons and ammo and God knows what else. Yeah, teddy bears. tools and yep, teddy bears and, and turtles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then someone asked about the Redeemer. No updates on the Redeemer yet. They you haven't decided if it's going to stay as an Aegis ship. I believe it's an Aegis ship at the moment. Um because at the moment, the Redeemer doesn't look like an Aegis ship. So they're debating whether to move it over to a different different manufacturer or change the look of the Redeemer to fit Aegis. That's their, that's their thing at the moment. Yeah. I suppose they have to figure out which is going to be more work. <laughs> yeah. Well, remodeling, it's going to be a lot, a lot more work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of, yeah. I mean, it makes sense to, to just push it over to something that's more in line. But... Um, you know, people. Some people buy in for the manufacturer as well. You know, they might have a, a yeah. line of Aegis ships, and that will piss a lot of people off if all of a sudden it isn't an Aegis. And you think, hang on, now I've got one Drake or one, you know, <laughs> Misk or something. So yeah, dodgy, dodgy. Yeah. Uh, so then someone asked if um, player visual damage states are going to be a thing, so that you can see if someone's been shot in the shoulder or whatever. Mm. Um, Currently, I don't think the tech allows for this, um, but it is something that Sean Tracy said he would love to put in the game. Yeah, that would, that, especially for immersion. You know, we're always talking about immersion and how we want this game to feel like we're living in it. That that will bring about a little bit more immersion if, you know, you turn to look at your friend and you can physically see, oh, he is wounded. Um, maybe I should, I don't know, when medic game plays in there, patch him up or whatever, you know, it's... It'll be, um, especially for medics, that will be a, a really awesome thing if you can actually assess your wounded. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, then they went on to salvage gameplay. Um, they were kind of specifically talking about the blockers for that gameplay. And there is actually quite a lot. Um, so, yeah, getting that anytime soon is a long shot. Um, <laughs> I think it's down for the end of the year at the moment. But I would not be surprised if that got pushed back again. Yeah, I can see that being like second or third quarter of next year. Mm. Uh, and then they were discussing the female model issues. Um, question came up from the audience uh, about when they're going to be kind of fixed. Because at the moment, if you carry a box, it kind of covers half their face. Um, uh, and they're not sure if it's a, a design problem or a metric problem. Yeah, they're not sure. So... That's going to be a, a little while for that. Um, and then it came up about quantum jump player engagement. The, the, old, the age old um, gripe from players is that quantum jumping is boring. <laughs> That's like saying my eight hour drive to Scotland is boring. Of course it is. You need to get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Players Just... ain't got time for that. No. <laughs> I've got five minutes to play the game. Well, you've chose the wrong game, my friend. 
Yeah, unfortunately, they couldn't say anything. Uh, they're working on a few things, uh, and Jared was sort of uh, very excited about what might be coming, but he's not allowed to say anything. Yeah, that's his job. He's like a little hype monkey. Hype monkey? Yeah, he's, the, <laughs> he's their hype monkey. He just goes around, yeah. shinies. You're like, yeah, <laughs> calm down, Jared. Stroke your beard. You'll be all right. <laughs> Okay, so then we got a question about having compasses in the verse, um, whether that can be a thing. Um, there doesn't seem to be any kind of reason why not. Mm-hmm. Just something they haven't done yet. I actually think it was something that they hadn't thought of because um, the question came up and Sean Tracy didn't really get what he was talking about. Um, yeah. And then when they kind of figured it out, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I don't know why we can't do that. Yes, their answer to everything is like, you know, of course it's possible, eventually. Like Just, a- I mean, I suppose that's probably true. I mean, if everything is, is going to be a possibility. Um, it's just how much time and effort it is. Um, I mean, at the moment, it you know, it's not really going to affect gameplay that much. But yeah, that would be a cool thing to have, especially as an explorer. If you're on a new land and you're like, right, I need to head east for one and a half miles to get to water I don't know something um, Mm. yeah be cool so scars and tattoos were next Um, I'm not even sure I know Sean Sean Tracy was was saying that the way he wants to do it with scars essentially is that if you take a a large amount of damage to a leg say uh, that gives you a scar it's not something you pick when you create your character it's something you earn yeah. so that you know see someone with a big scar on their face you know they've seen some shit yeah you need the you weren't there man scar <laughs> yeah um, yeah that's what lacks in most games is you're like yes I've made this grizzled veteran and you're level one and you're like come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah that that works so much better I like I like the, the, the concept behind that the other thing he said about it was that the um, he wants to put like bump maps on it so that they look he doesn't like it when the scar is just a flat texture on the character because it looks like terrible and he's right it does not look that great and so going down the star citizen route of fidelity they want to make it as good looking as possible yeah it always bugged me in games where you see someone who's got this huge scar from like the top of their forehead across their eye and down to their nose and it's just this flat perfect thing and you think what were you cut with like a Stanley knife yeah. <laughs> a paper cut, you know. If that was a sword or a big hefty blade, that would have that would have left some damage. Oh yeah. yeah. And then they went on to uh, ship to ship docking and ship to station docking. Um, now it doesn't sound like there's too much tech needed to get, actually get that working, but um, Mark Abent, who used to do the Bug Smashers uh, series, uh, brought up something called the Chris Roberts magic stream now we don't know what that is um, but apparently it is required to get this kind of ship to ship docking thing working Um, yeah the the magic stream is actually what they call Chris Roberts peeing because he pees money (laughs) yes they just need more money come on Chris time to pee just just, just pee all over us (laughs) give us your magic stream (laughs) (laughs) That's what you call a golden shower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was everything from Star Citizen Live event. Um, considering it was the first sort of subscriber live audience, I think it actually went quite well. There's some half decent questions coming out of the audience, which is kind of rare when you ask people on Spectrum. Yeah, um, that doesn't usually happen. It's like when you when you see one of the um, Q and A's for a ship or anything, they always pick the kind of the most easy to answer, boring questions. Um, whereas when you do have a, just an audience of people and they're picking them at random and they don't know their question in advance, you, you yeah. kind of just get put on the spot and it's perfect. That's what I liked about um, some of the questions at Britis and Con, where they did put them on the spot and they they had to answer. Although at Britis and Con they couldn't say anything, whereas at Citizen Con they probably could, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that works so much. But that's a good format that they've chosen to do because it means that they kind of, yeah, they kind of do just get put on the spot and they have to give us what we want. It's nice. So last up, we had the monthly reports come out as well. We had quite a, 
quite a lot of information coming out this week. Yeah. Um, I'll run through these pretty quick. Um, so Vandal Facial Rig, uh, they've started to, to rig up the, the Vandal face uh, for yeah. animation. Uh, Vandal Armor is getting its finishing touches now. Uh, I'm quite looking forward to seeing some Vandal armor and weapons and whatever. Yeah, it's going to look cool. Uh, they're working on version 2 of jumping to stop that kind of flappy arms animation going on. <laughs> Good. Bad time. Um, they're, looking, they're working their way through stealth takedowns, both knife and barehanded. Um, that'll be a good one. We can get those in the game. Yeah, I can't wait for that. And they're doing some AI 3D pathfinding algorithm. Um, hopefully this will kind of tidy up a bit of the uh, sort of maneuverability on AI ships. Um, anyone who's tried fighting AI ships at the moment and know that their pathfinding is not exactly great at the moment. No. They've made some improvements on the gas cloud tech. Um, hopefully we'll get that soon. Um, kind of been teasing it for a year now. And mm. uh, also, there's something coming up called the Origin Celebration. Uh, not too much details on what it is exactly, um, but it's something to do with the release of all the 300 reworks. Um, but yeah, other than there's an event coming. Yeah, other than that, we don't know what it is. I mean, they're going to have to make it a big event to appease all the people who are really pissed that they're still waiting. Yeah, probably, yeah. Okay, they're also um, trying to up their game on the bartender experience. Uh, it sounds like they've got a mission giver coming um, who is a bartender and will give out these heroic missions. Cool. Call them that. Um, so in line with that, they're also doing some work on the whole bartender animations. and uh, Yeah, so if, if you like to go to the, the bars in Star Citizen and drink, you'll be having a better time soon. Yep, I'm going to, in fact, whilst we're doing this, if I can find it, I'm going to chuck in the bit of footage of me when I went into a bar in, uh, I want to say maybe Lawville, but I'm not sure. And there was people sitting at the bar and I sat down and I like, you know, they've got all these animations of me sitting down, putting my hand on the bar, kind of like waving at the bartender and he just ignored me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> thanks very much, mate. I'll, uh, I'm not pretty enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, they've also started uh, building the Crusader landing zone, Orison. Um, they've started it in White Box, uh, doing some concept work on how it's going to look. I know everyone's kind of excited to see this place. Um, I personally feel that this landing zone will be the most popular one in Stanton. Oh, yeah. Um, it's going to be a large city landing zone, but you're not going to have any um, sort of atmosphere downtime to deal with because it's yeah. floating um, yeah I think it's going to be quite a big mission hub and going to be a, a firm favourite for people in uh, in the Stanton series in Stanton system yeah I was going to say that's where most people are probably going to end up um, you know laying their hat or whatever you say because um, yeah it makes more sense it's going to be quicker to get in and out um, and it's going to look awesome I mean if you've seen the, the concept yeah the concept art is just unbelievable and hearing the developers talk about developing it they are so excited they're weeing themselves do you know what i mean to actually make this thing and that's when you know you're going to get a good product is when the people making it are so excited are more excited maybe than you <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah yeah looking forward to that and last up we've got uh, the the white box has been complete for the asperia prowler so this is a uh, tavaran stealth dropship i believe mm. Um, yeah, white box is now complete. Uh, looking forward to seeing that one. Yep, going to be cool. Okay, so there you go. That's it for the week. Um, quite a packed week. A lot of stuff in there. Um, so if you uh, liked some of the stuff we talked about, if you've got any comments on any of these points that we brought up, uh, any of the law posts and stuff like that, very interesting stuff, definitely drop that down in the comments below. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Star Citizen content. 
and don't forget we stream so we stream every week so we stream on a monday and a thursday and we we do occasionally stream on a tuesday um so keep your eyes peeled for that as well um and don't forget to um check out for the rest of the month some of our live streams because we are collecting money for uh, st jude's play live so again we would really appreciate some of your money um but yeah that's pretty much it so thanks very much everyone for watching and we will see you next week bye 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 bye